And I have, I have a friend who hooks us up with, um, soul food from, um, the work in, the work in a pet store, and somebody he knows owns a pet store, so they get a lot of trial size dog food, you know, like, small bags, I think they have to rotate their stock, they, um, I get, like, all the old stuff, it's not expired, but it's gotta go fast, and they can't get rid of it all at once, so. Yeah, so have you, in your opinion, do you feel that the city has been responsive to you guys in terms of trying to get pet food out to you guys or anything Nobody like that? Nobody has brought us any pet food. The pet food we do have, we had to go buy. And now I, I have all the cats out front. They were, they were there before, but they were also getting food from down the block and stuff. So I, I just find them now and I'm feeding like the entire neighborhood of the animals because and it's like, they're always out there and we're always trying to catch them and get them fixed because if you get them fixed, you won't have all the feral cats. But at the same time, like, I say, I took the two adults, but like those small ones, I couldn't catch them. They were too, too fast and they're under the bushes. And, but now that nobody's in the neighborhood able to see the cats, all the cats are coming because they know those two dishes are there. So I'm definitely needing a lot of cat food. And um, dog food, I, I'm running low because I gave a lot of it to uh, a couple of people around the block that had dog food, and their houses happened to have steps in the front. They lost all their dog food because their their houses are walking from the street, so that got flooded. So we have uh, MREs and water, but we had to like we had to go get the MREs and water, like. Even though we were feeding it to the people down the like, I was the only one that was able Where did to get the uh, MREs come from what, that came from the National Guard, or? Yeah, the National Guard on 80-something Street. We had to walk down and get it. They didn't set anything up close enough that you could grab enough food for the neighbors and stuff and come back because you can't carry it too heavy. So I borrowed a hand truck, and me and my husband walked up to 88th Street from here. And we were wet and we were cold, but we walked up there. We got a whole bunch of food and we brought it back. And then we wanted to give them half a bit away because the other people were like, where'd you get that? They should have made announcements on the radio if you could keep repeating yourself over and over about Manhattan. Like the, I feel like the mayor she said, if you live in the Rockways, you can get food here, here, and here. The only way I was finding out is if somebody had food in their hand, I said, where'd you get that? And then by the time of finding out, they already came back from there. So I was getting information late, and then I would run to where the food was at, but it would be gone already. We had that happen a couple times. And when you're on foot in the cold, you know, and I'm disabled, I have a bad back, I can't even run far, I can't carry this. You know, that's why somebody wants us a hand truck. And then my husband had to come back, and he shouldn't be carrying that either, but one of us had to, and I couldn't, so. We were, once, um, my brother, um, from Westchester, he came down, and he said, you know what, come with me, and you come drive the car back, I'll give you one of my cars, and he gave us his car. Once he gave us his car, my dad's a, a veteran, my brother's a veteran, we took we took the car and we took the guts up there and we showed them, you know, both of them are veterans. Both of them are disabled, they can't carry these things. They gave me enough food to give my dad's house, my brother's house here. And then um, with what they packed us, I came back and I gave to the couple down the block that had two kids. Um, I gave around the corner to a friend of ours that doesn't have a car and he didn't have he doesn't even have gas. So we were lucky to have gas because as little as we have, other people have even less. So. What, what, what do you think the city, state, or even federal government could have done differently that, um, now that um, you're looking at this? Or what can they do differently? Still going through it. Well, we were very angry. The FEMA didn't show up here and nobody had food for, like, 
we didn't get food until like day four, so we were eating all the old food from the refrigerator. And we had stopped on camp because of the storm. He said with power hours, but I never imagined we'd be needing those canned goods because, we, you know, we went that many days. And um, what they could have done differently, like I said, is that the radio over and over when we did get a station like 1010 Winds or any other news stations, they, they should have made announcements where to find food because it was more or less word of mouth around here. And it was frustrating because you're like, why aren't they coming to Rockway to help? Well, we didn't even know until we got out with a car to see that like parts of Rockway, homes and stuff, were demolished and leveled to the ground. We always knew the Bird Channel would get hit hard because it has a history of that. But we never imagined like places that never got water before would be destroyed. Also. So you've been, I'm so, repeat for me again, um, how long you've been living here? I grew up in this neighborhood around the corner. And my dad's been here, he's old, 60 something years old. He's been here. My grandparents owned the, the little bungalows across the street around the corner. So all the, we were calculating uh, over 100 years in this neighborhood within two blocks. And you we never saw it like this? You never got water, no, ever. My dad's bus never gets water, ever, no matter what storm it is. The last time they've seen any kind of water like this they, compared to Hurricane Donna in the 70s, and still that block wasn't underwater, not like it was this time. And my brother, my brother from Westchester, he was saying that with, with um, global warming and everything, like the storms are not going to be any, like we used to get really big winters where you can go out and build forts and everything. Now, now we're lucky if the mosquitoes die for the winter or the plants you know, die for the winter and go into hibernation so they could come up the next year. So you've noticed a big change. Big change, yeah, mm -hmm. because I used to have a garden full of bulbs and everything and the bulbs would come up when springtime was here and you knew it was summer. But now, like, the, the winters are so warm, the bulbs are coming up in February and then it's snowing on them and it's killing everything. And by summer, nothing's coming up because it's already dead because it came up, grew and froze while well, it's alive. Like, so I guess that's why the storm was as bad as it was. It's, it's never happened this bad. What 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 could um, people do for you, like in you know community or elsewhere in the country? What what do you think would be helpful? Is there anything um, people could do? I don't know how much FEMA reimburses, but um, like these old houses, like this house was built in the 40s. It has old wiring that's coated with cloth. Now, once that old wiring with the cloth gets wet, it it, it shouldn't stay with the salt on it because as soon as there's some moisture, like the dryer venting into the basement, it's going to put moisture. That salt's going to make a conductor. So all of that wires at risk of a fire. So we're going to have to pull all of that out. So like aftermath, like what people could do is like help pay for supplies for rebuilding or you know, maybe maybe it could come out with like companies that can because it even with all of this the, the only people that came around here with generators were taking four hundred dollar generators. Buying them at Home Depot when I can't find one, they would buy one. And a whole truck of them, U whole trucks, people were coming from Brooklyn with U whole trucks with generators and they were triple charging and quadrupling the price of the original equipment. So if it cost for something, they were charging us twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for it. it were these like, just people that bought them up and then people, brought but them the over? The stores weren't stopping them mm. from buying all of those either. Like the like home people I spoke to the manager, they said, Yeah, they'll think about it, but they should have had a waiting list. So if you showed an address in a hard hit area like this, you can get on a waiting list and maybe by day three I would have had a generator. Because that generator came all the way from Maryland. And it was ordered online by my boss. But so I mean, just I someone didn't find one anywhere in this area, even though they were available, it was being sold to people who didn't need them. That was just trying to make the buck. So, so just buck. so I, I'm understanding, the people would go as soon as this happened. The, the lights went out, and people realized that, you know, you guys people were dial straight. They, would they, they the went store. to Home Depot. They bought up all the generators, right. and then they would come back here and sell you guys the generators sell for like four hundred. 
sell a, a four eighty nine generator for like fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. My fa uh neighbor of my father's around the block paid a thousand dollars for a man to pump out his basement because he had a generator and a pump and we couldn't get our hands on either of those. Nobody had pumps. Like there should have been a thing set up that they weren't allowed to do this. And then when the store said they didn't know this was happening, they still didn't offer to put my name on a list or anything to help us. So as fast as the generators were going, they were going to people who didn't need them. Because finally one one man, he wanted six hundred dollars and we're like, yeah, he's making a little bit of money, but he drove around and found them. We would have been fine paying a hundred dollars more than what they cost in the store because these people went and they traveled and they drove with them. But other people were coming with new walls full of generators and they were charging triple and quadruple. And had we had that kind of money, we probably would have been desperate enough to buy one, but we didn't have the money to pay for it. So, okay. you know, he didn't take credit cards out the back of the truck, he took cash. But um, the store should have done things differently. If they knew all these people were in such a high demand, they should have started a waiting list. Um, he has started a waiting list. But I, I wouldn't have been on the list to get one right away because by the time I found out, she has had, like I said, there was a lack of information. The only information we could get was from the radio because there was no, everybody said log on to here, log on to, we have no internet, we have no telephones, we have no way of logging anywhere. And, uh, Cause they have no electricity. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's stupid that you're saying log on to FEMA, but how are we going to do that? Like there was no the police could have went around with a, with the PA on their cars because they're, dri they're driving through these neighborhoods. And if they were checking on like safety of the neighborhood, they could have at the same time said, you know, food and water could be found on blah 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 street. You know, I didn't know all that was set up on 116 till. Word of mouth. Somebody said, "Oh, Fiend is on 116." But we didn't know that. Nobody was saying it on the radio. But if you live in Rockaway areas, you can find help on this street or that street from so and so services. You know. Was the phone working at all? Were no. people able to call or? Cell phones weren't even working. The towers were down. What so about if you had a landline? Did, did that work there at all? There were no landlines. That was out too. Yeah. Everything was out. The only communication we had was like an RGP battery radio. And we would listen to the radio. That's how we knew the second storm was coming. But um, as I said, the radio would just keep repeating about Manhattan. And they said the electric in Manhattan will be on. But here we are in what neighborhood is well worse off in Manhattan. At least there's people in Manhattan. Rockaway, we were on foot. And it's not safe to walk around the whole peninsula on foot. You know, a lot of people got hurt. Were there looting, looting going yeah, on? Yeah, they were looting, they, they were raping, robbing, you name it. It was going on. They there. were raping? They raped a lot of girls in Far Rockaway. Oh yeah. my goodness. Because they were down the block. He knows some. He knew them as a girl. Oh. A, lot, a lot of stuff was going on, especially when you have big buildings full of people and there's no lights, you know? Even the whole was are black, so. It was. We so go it, outside it and because of even the street lights being out, like it, it's like pitch black out. You can't see anything. So, so especially with it getting it. dark yeah. earlier. That's yeah. why they made the curfew was to keep people safe because if you if you were in at the curfew, then the people being out at the curfew could be questioned. What are they doing walking around here? Because a lot of them walking around here were walking around here with gas tanks and hoses and screwdrivers because they were popping the cars. They were breaking the you put a lock on the gas tank and they would break the the tank of the car. The so so it sounds like you had a combination of uh, people issues. people that would um, help each other, like neighbors would help you each other. The best of people or the worst of people. That's it, no yeah. You were either good or you were not good. Because hmm. there was no in between you know, help a little, uh, if you were helping, like, I gave a lot of food out, and we didn't even know where we was going to get the next batch of food from, and I just gave them food out and water out. You know, like, there was a lot of people we seen helping. Um, four women came down from Queens, the middle of Queens, in the middle of the night, with hot food and water, and didn't know where to go, because everything was pitch dark out. And I said, well, 
I could take the food to a couple houses I know that need food they didn't have gas to cook or to heat up the stove or anything. And then um, it wasn't safe for them, but they wanted to help. So I took the food and water and I brought to a couple places I knew that needed food. So some people helped, but then you had looting. Yeah, and I had yeah, a lot of bad things, yeah. He was going to the house and he always had to wash his dryer. You know? It was like, it cost $80 just to wash the clothes. Mm -hmm. They had nothing, nowhere for us to go that we could take our own stuff and wash. So, even even simple things like laundry, like had they had places they could just give, like, get, or somehow, I don't know, there's a lot of things they could have done, but didn't. But it, the smallest thing would have been at least to read this information over the radio. So, because we heard a lot of stuff on the radio of what was going on in Manhattan, but being in Rockaway, we heard nothing. We kept hearing different stories of when the lights are going to go on, but like even now, I can't even tell you what I heard about the lights going on, because I heard different stories. One, one being five days, one being three months. So three on, months? They were saying that the, the old wine could have been compromised to where some people wouldn't have lights till like the middle of December. My, I know my house personally is going to have to have the basement ceilings ripped out because those wires got wet, they were underwater. So even if they put the lights, I have to get an electrician. So like after, afterwards, like help from people that help do buildings and houses, like to help pay for, I know they're going to make us get licensed. There's a, um, there's a program. There's a program called Fast Repairs um, that the city just implemented. Let me give you the information yeah. um, so that you guys can get. Yeah, so that you guys can get things going a little bit faster. Okay. Okay. Because uh, the boiler my dad was telling me like, even though, like, I don't know if they're gonna inspect, inspect in the city you want everything done by license electricians and licensing. Because I'm sure there's a lot of do it yourself or cheaper contractors, but mm -hmm. if the city's going to give us a hard time about the licenses, then we're going to pay right. the top they're, dollar for they're like, going a license to, electrician. Um, from, what I, yeah, from what I understand, they're going to kind of expedite that process. Right. Um, so let me, let me see if I can point that for you. Rapid Repairs Program. Um, and then you guys don't have to pay upfront for them. Okay. And what do they do? They work it like a wall? I'm not exactly sure. Um, they'll work with the agencies, including the Department of Building and Park uh, and DHT, um, to make. Okay, so first thing you said, did you contact FEMA? Um, we found FEMA when we started getting out and talking to people. Mm -hmm. That's how we found out. That's it. What I was did you get an ID number from them? Um, yeah, FEMA gave okay. me an ID number. So then call 311. But, um, and then my, on my insurance by like FEMA told me if I had flood, I had to talk to my carrier. I spoke to all right. eight, and I got a, I got a claim number. So like I spoke to right. one today and asked how do I get the emergency food stamp because right. I have a Medicaid card. Mm -hmm. So I thought they would put it on there. Mm -hmm. But she's she's like, mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Um, you have to go to your local branch. Mm -hmm. And she gave me the local branch, but the local branch is underwater, so I don't know what they're doing about that. So um, so call three one one and tell them that you would like to sign up for NYC rapid repairs. 